Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Arches National Park in Utah. <laughs> We're uh, gonna do some, gonna try and shoot some arches here in some midday light, which, I mean, shooting midday is always a bit challenging depending on your conditions. As you can see, the sun's like behind me there. So I'm going on a trail right now to shoot three different arches that are here, one of which I've been to, which is going to be the last one that we're going to visit. But there's one up here called Broken Arch Tapestry Arch. I'm going to head up there and try and shoot those ones first. Um, I've never been to those two. Um, this is my third visit to Arches National Park, but I haven't been here in two years. Um, so yeah, we're going to go try and shoot those two first, and then we're going to go back and try and shoot Sand Dune Arch, which is the third one which I have been to before. even in actually planning on coming to Arches National Park today. I was actually just passing through this part of the state of Utah and decided, you know, I might as well stop in for part of the day and explore a park and see if I could take some photos. I really don't have a plan for being here other than spending a few hours here and seeing what I can get up to. And sorry, that lighting is really terrible. Um, but then, you know, I did remember that Sand Dune Arch was here and I really that was a cool subject to photograph last time I was here two years ago. And these other two arches are right here on the same trail. So it just seemed like a convenient trail to hit and try and take some photos really quick while I was here. But yeah, very impromptu, unplanned trip to Arches National Park. Was not planning on being here <laughs> right now, but alas, I'm here. So obviously most of the time, myself included, I'd say I prefer to shoot in what we consider like, you know, preferred lighting conditions, which most times is like sunset, sunrise time of day. Um, but now it's the middle of the day. But I think with the location as amazing as Archer's National Park, you can probably get nice photos no matter what the conditions, honestly, if you uh, have the right mindset. It's also it's a good challenge, I think, as a photographer to try and take photos even when the conditions aren't ideally what you want it to be. It doesn't mean you can't take some good photos and still learn from it. I also want to say this is literally the least busy has ever been at Arches National Park in all the times I've been here. Um, which obviously is due to the time of year. I was here about two years ago in October, and it was very busy then. And I was here, well, it'll be almost three years ago, the first time I came here in, I believe it was like late April, early May. And it was insanely busy. And then also we were just here back in the end of April um, on a trip to Moab. They didn't come to Arches, but went to Canyonlands and a couple other places. And it was insanely busy. So I'm just beneath the first arch I'm visiting to photograph. This is Tapestry Arch. Tapestry Arch. Right there above me. So I'm just underneath it here. I found a composition I liked. And I took the photo at first. And I thought it worked already. I was kind of taking, looking through the arch and out to the sky and stuff there. And you can see the whole bend of the arch there. And I kind of liked the composition, but I felt like the photo would be better, like it would add a lot more to the composition if I were standing right here underneath the arch, just to give it some scale. Um, and it just tell a bit more of a story to add like the human element to the image. Cause without it, it's just, you know, the arch was just cool, of course, to look at. But I felt like adding me standing underneath the, underneath the arch would add more of a story to the photo. So, the thing is, in order to get that image, where I took that photo, is right there behind me. You can see my tripod is like set up in this crevice over here. So when I took the photo myself, I could just easily stand there and take the photo, but setting up the tripod there took me a while that I get to stay in place and get my camera set up on it. That I was able to put on the 10 second burst timer, or the timer, 10 second timer in burst mode. So give me enough time to run down here and stand where I wanted to stand to get that image. So, I don't know, I hope those turned out all right. They were kind of cool, I got like six images, just a little bit different of me standing underneath the arch. And yeah, hopefully they turned out pretty cool. That's kind of my, me explaining a bit of my, the process behind taking this image here and kind of how I thought it through and how I feel like, yeah, adding a bit of a story behind your image, like instead of just having the image of the arch, like I took the first time, it was to put me, a person underneath the arch, to add a bit of a story, I feel like, to the image and just make it a bit more compelling to look at. So 
this one behind me is called Broken Arch, which I'm not really sure why it's called Broken Arch. Like I'm a bit confused because it's not it's not broken, like it's fully intact. Um, this is probably like the most challenging one to photograph in my opinion because I feel like the composition I found that I liked was looking this way behind me. Um, and the sun's like directly over there right now. So I feel like it's about the worst time of day to shoot how I'd want to shoot this. Um, I did take a photo of it earlier. I had this bush down here. I kind of had that in the foreground with that in the back, with the arch in the background. And I liked it. It was a you know very wide shot. Um, but I think it's just this guy's going to be all blown out and everything. And there's just a lot of glare looking directly in the sun. So that composition didn't really fully work how I would like it to or imagine it to. But that's how it goes sometimes, you know. You gotta come to place at the right time of day. Sometimes you wanna get the photo you want. So that was kind of thought process behind this one. And um, yeah, we're gonna head over to Sand Dune Arch last, which I think Ryder Call is actually a really cool arch and I liked it a lot. So we're gonna try and shoot that one. <laughs> This is Sand Dune Arch behind me. Honestly, this is probably my favorite one of these in the coolest location of all three that I've done, but we're in between like almost this little canyon here. You like, walk up this, and it's just really cool. Um, it is a lot busier here at this arch. It's definitely the busiest one, so I mean, to contend with crowds it makes it hard to take photos, of course. But yeah, it's a really cool one. Um, and it's also probably the most busy because it's very close to the parking lot, so. It's like less than a five minute walk back to the car from here. So I think everybody kind of just comes to this one and maybe they don't visit the other ones because they're a further hike to get to. I did one just at the arch and then I did another one's a few of each with me standing underneath the arch. So basically the same thing I did with the, with the other arch, put me underneath it to try and add a bit more of a story to it. I don't know, that's basically the same exact example of both arches, what I did, but I feel like it worked for this to help give scale. And that way you can see me standing underneath and see how big it is and it really helps with a wide angle lens too, just showing the whole arch and the me standing underneath. I had to put the tripod in a pretty, um, I don't know, somewhat unsecure location to get those photos on the sandstone, but I guess that's what you gotta do when you gotta take photos yourself. You gotta set it up on a tripod and just set the timer and did a burst shot, 10 second timer, and just got a few different options each time. But yeah, I'll show you guys those photos and you know, let me know what you think.